Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to show you how to do level transition inside Unreal Engine. You may have heard of level streaming already, but what I am currently showing you is a bit different and uses camera tricks. I haven't managed to figure out how to do this using level streaming yet, and this might not be the best way to do it, but it gets the job done. So here is how you do it. In order to get this setup working, we need three things. First is to go into plugins and enable a plugin called Composure. Go ahead and restart the engine. I have already set up a level here with a sphere and a cube and we are going to transition in between them. Out of the three things which I told you earlier, the second is material setup. So let us go ahead and do a part of it right now. Right click and go into textures and select render target. Rename it to whatever you want. This is where we will get our second camera to store what it is seeing and help in the transitioning. Just change the width and height to your liking. I will go with the standard 1920 and 1080. Now before I go ahead and do other material work, I think it is better to do the blueprint setup and return to it later. So we are going to work on the third and most important ingredient of our recipe, the blueprint. Right click in a suitable folder and create an actor blueprint. With the name selected, add a Cine Camera component. Now make sure to select the name again and add a Scene Capture component 2D. This Scene Capture component takes in a texture target which you can see in the details panel. And if you expand that, you can see the one which you created. Now we also need this to be offset by a desired value which we will do in the blueprint. So go into the construction script section. This section works when the blueprint is first placed in the level. So drag out the execution pin and look for copy camera settings to scene capture option. Drag and drop the cine camera variable from here and select get cine camera. Attach it to the source. Similarly drag and drop the scene capture component and connect it to the destination. Now for this focal length, drag a pin out from the cine camera and look for focal length. Click on get current focal length and plug it in there. Now this is all for the camera settings. For the offset, drag a pin from the scene capture component 2D and look for set relative location option. Connect the execution pins. Now you can right click the new location pin and split struct pin to get the x, y and z separately. I am going to create a new float variable and plug that into the y location since I have already done the testing and I know that this works. Your requirements may be different so proceed accordingly. Now, this script only works for one time when the blueprint is put in the level. What if you change the cine camera focal length or aperture or something and animate that? So to make sure that the camera settings always get copied to the scene capture component, we need to copy this script and paste it in the event graph. So just connect the event take execute pin with the copy one and you're all set. Now we're almost done. This marks the end of our third point which was the blueprint setup. A quick note is that if you want to move the camera around then make sure that you are doing the rotation and translation of the entire blueprint and not the individual components. Just a heads up in case later you notice your cameras are floating in desync. Now quickly jumping back to the second thing which was our material setup which if you still remember isn't complete yet. Now you can see our render target preview is already showing our other scene. This should assure you that you are on the right path. 
We need a post process material for transition to work. So let's go ahead and create a material and name it whatever you want. Open it up and in material details, change the material domain from surface to post process. Now right click in the blank area and look for scene texture. While this is selected, change the scene texture ID in the details from scene color to post process input 0. I believe this is a vector 4 value and we need only RGB from this. So we will use a component mask to get just those 3 values from this. This is the first texture. For the next texture, open the content drawer and drag and drop the render target. Use the mask just to make sure we are not creating any weird issues later on. Now the way to transition from one value to another can be done through the linear interpolate node, which is what we are going to use. So drag a pin out, look for linear interpolate and connect the second pin as well. Now when you connect the output of the lerp to the MSF color, you should see a weird mixture of both the scenes. This is what we need to fix. Almost there. For the last part of this material, we will set up a proper alpha input to separate these two textures. Now this last part is purely math based. It is okay if you don't understand any of this. You can easily find other shapes of transition. I am showing you how to do a sphere. Get a world position node and multiply a small number to it like 0 0.001 so that the changes are not too crazy. Now we only need the positive values so we use an absolute node to get that. Now from some mathematics lessons of your yesteryears you might remember that the general formula of a sphere is x squared plus y squared plus z squared which is equals to radius squared. Well here's a quick recap if you don't remember. To control the swap region, I need to subtract this value with something which we can change. So create a scalar parameter for that. Since our node setup is as is, we need to invert this circle. So look for 1 minus and plug it in. To make it clearly demarcated, use floor. And to sharpen it, use saturate. Done. Now you can plug this into the alpha and with any luck you should see something like this. Let's just change this to a parameter so that we can change its values from the material instance. Compile safe, come out and create a material instance from the post process material. As you can see, we can control the radius and thus the swap region of the transition with this. The last piece of the puzzle is the post process volume. This is where we will apply the material and cause the magic to happen. So set it up however you like to do, but do not do infinite extend unbounded as we have both the scenes in the same level. If you go down, you should see post process materials, expand that, plus to add an element and choose asset reference and in here look for your post process material instance. If you haven't fucked up anywhere before this, you should see something like this happening when you go inside the post process volume. Now we are really very close. The last thing is to set this up in a sequence and enjoy the transition. 
So create a sequence. Add in a camera cut track. Add in your camera blueprint. And then select the blueprint for the camera cut. Now you can track the cine camera and when you lock the viewport to the camera, and control the radius from the material instance window, you should see the transition happening. Now, if you have made a really bad face after looking at the missing lighting in the transition, then I have just a solution for you. Go back into your post-process material and in the details, go all the way down until you find a blendable location option. This determines at what point the blending occurs. Change this from after tone mapping to before tone mapping and you should have your perfect lighting back. There you go. Happy now? And if you're still not satisfied and want me to show you how to animate this, well, you need to set up a material parameter collection for that. So go back to your materials, right click and inside materials there is something called material parameter collection. Create one and open it up. Since we are controlling the radius, all we need is one scalar parameter. So expand that and name it radius. Save, go back and open the post process material for one last time. Here, open content drawer and drag and drop the material parameter collection. Select radius from the parameter name and connect it in place of the radius you used earlier. Delete that, save this and you're done. Now finally, in your sequencer, you can track your material parameter collection. And from there, you can track the radius. Keyframe it however you want and you have your level transition in sequencer with whatever border you want. Let me know in the comments about the topics you would like to see the future videos on. Don't forget to like the video if it was helpful and subscribe to the channel for more such content. See you again in the next one. Have a great day.